Now, as Monty Python would say, something completely different. I love junk radios, and the only thing I love better than junk radios is junk Mustangs. And uh, this is a rally pack off of a 66 Mustang. And it's in pretty bad shape. Um, just needs to be repainted. I've already got all of the parts here to rebuild it. You can get the lenses and uh, the chrome rings and the little center buttons there to make it look pretty. And this one's kind of special um, because this one is for a six cylinder car which I'm working on right now. And it's hard to find these for six cylinders. Most of the rally packs that were bought were bought for uh, V8 cars so uh, I've had this one for many years and uh, I uh, my brother had a 66 Mustang he wasn't driving it he just gave it to me and I've been working on it fixing it up so I've drug this out and so we're going to redo it and in the process we're going to change the clock mechanism to a quartz mechanism. I've done that several times before. I'll show you how to do that. Used to be you could buy a conversion kit, but I don't think anybody sells one anymore. But I've got my own method. The um, This clock mechanism original is kind of interesting. Uh, it's a mechanical clock and it's got like a little solenoid in it and it winds itself uh, what happens is it, it winds up and then it starts ticking down and when it gets to the bottom it makes an electrical contact that pulls the weight it's sort of like a little weighted arm pulls that weighted arm up to the top and it can it uh, ticks down again and it just keeps doing that so if you ever had one of these you'll remember that these clocks uh, you can hear them go chunk about every I don't know 10 minutes or so and um, they don't keep good time uh, they are problematic and so I convert them to quartz and they're very reliable then. And the batteries last a long time. I run mine on a, uh, a, uh, a cell. And I, the one in my black Mustang, I think probably has been in there at least two years, maybe three, and it's still keeping time off of, uh, it's actually a double A battery. Okay. So we'll start the process here. Okay, first thing we got to do is get this uh, dial faceplate off. And there are little tabs around the edge. I think there's three of them. You got to bend those back. And uh, it's hard to get to them with anything with that plastic lens in there. So I usually just pry this lens up. Don't care if it breaks or not because you're going to probably replace it. Uh, i never done one of these. I didn't replace it. Once you get the uh, lens up, it's easy to get to those little tabs with pliers and uh, bend them back. Because you need them up straight before this thing's going to come out. Um... That uh, nut on the back, I think you can leave on there. I think it'll still. Once you get these tabs bent, it'll it'll slide out. Once you get the mechanism out, um, this this knob will screw off of the shaft. Now I've done these before and didn't have a lot of trouble. This one. The only way I could get it to break loose 
was to put a pair of pliers on this gear on the back side and a pair of pliers on the knob to get it to break loose so that one was a tough one but when you do that the lens will come off as well as that little white ring which you're going to need later on it's actually black <laughs> white on the back and black on the front uh, the hands it's three little clock hands and they will pull right off of that shaft so that's all you need to do with that now the clock face is held on once again with some little tabs bent over that come through this bracket it's three of them so We've got to get those bent straight before the clock face is going to come off. Well, I bent those straight. I found a little pair of side cutters. It's handy for that. They get under the edge of those and you can easily bend them up straight. You don't want to bend them a lot because you're going to have to re-bend them later on. To, you need to put this back on this bracket. So. When you do that, this clock face, whoop, dropped it, but it'll slip right off. Now we've got to get all of this mechanism off of this bracket. We're, we're only going to use the bracket and the face plate. And um, so this thing is held on by three little, uh, what do you call these washers? Anyway, they lock on got little teeth in them and as far as I know the only way to get these things off is just to destroy them we're not going to use this anyway so we'll have to pry those off and after we pry those off this uh, bracket will slip right off of this mechanism just leaves a few little gears and etc We'll, uh, we'll get rid of those later. This shaft um, is swaged on. It's just a little brass shaft and it's swaged. And I find if you just uh, wiggle it a little bit with a pair of pliers, it'll come loose. Now these gears, these three gears, on brass shafts and they are swaged on the back side they just look like little dots there but uh, what I'm going to do is I'll have to cut this shaft in two to get it um, off of there if you do this you'll see why At one end of the up the outer end is larger than the hole so only way you can get it off there is cut it and then while I've got my Dremel tool I'll grind the uh, where it's swaged down I'll grind those off and all of those gears will fall off the back side now we have a clean bracket no gears no nothing now when we put this quartz movement on this quartz movement is deeper to where we can no longer use these tabs as they are we need for this to slide deeper back into the housing to accommodate the thicker quartz movement so what I do is I bend these tabs out straight and I put a little angle on them so when I shove this inside the housing the tabs will hold it in place uh, just by friction that's all I do I don't glue it um, because you want to be able to take this out later and change your battery so that's all I'm going to take and bend these tabs straight and we'll go from there so you can see how I bent those tabs up straight. Now we can shove this in and the um, tabs will hold it in place, just the friction. 
we can shove it in as far as we need to to accommodate that uh, quartz movement and it'll still leave room behind there for our AA battery to uh, run the clock now is the time to start working with this putting this movement quartz movement in this unit this is the smallest quartz unit I've been able to find that will work in that housing and I get it from clockkit.com it's spelled K-L-O-C-K-I-T dot com they specialize in everything you need to make quartz clocks or clocks in general parts to make clocks they have a um, very large line of quartz clocks but like I say this our quartz movements but this is the smallest one that I've been able to find the only one I've been able to find will fit inside this housing part number on it is SKU 10,000 real cheap like seven dollars and the hands for it are free but when you get to the end when you place the order for the movement you get down to the end you get a choice of hands and you want to make sure you get these hands because these are very very close to the ones on the original Mustang the only thing is that you'll have to paint them red and uh, but they're shaped just very much like it the other thing you have to do is take you some side cutters and cut them to length to match the uh, Mustang ones the original Mustang ones now things start to get a little dicey because you got to make sure that everything goes together properly and you'll remember this plate where the clock movement was mounted on and you remember I bent these tabs up straight so they'll slip down inside of that housing now if you look at this housing you'll see in these areas these bumps there's three of them molded they they're for the screws um, where the screws go in so the screws will clear the side of the housing when they're put in and um, so you you've got to get this thing in you don't want those little arms riding on top of those bumps you want it um, clearing those bumps and the housing if you look at it like this you'll see that these two holes here have a it's a longer distance between them and then a short distance here and a short distance here so this is the top this top screw is is going to be the top of the clock so you got to start thinking about that and then this thing also has similar kind of arrangement you got a large space a large space and then a small space well the small space goes at the top it slips in like this and so that way these little arms clear those bumps or not they're not riding on those bumps and the movement will set on top of that and then the face plate will set on top of that there's one other problem or one of the things you got to do this movement on the back is the little adjustment wheel where you adjust the timing or the time and that when it sets down on this uh, we're, we're going to have to make a, uh, a clearing for it because it's it, first of all it won't set level secondly you've got to make it accessible so you can set the time later I guess you could just move the hands but still uh, because of that little wheel there that you adjust the time 
keeps it from setting down level because we're going to glue this uh, this quartz movement to this plate. So if you go back and look at this again, this plate, it'll look like this. There's you got a hole up here to the top. You got a hole here. This is actually uh, pretty much in the center, I believe. And then you got these holes down here. This one right here. We need to enlarge that so that this um, little adjustment wheel will fit in that hole, and, and the hole's got to be big enough that it will clear. Everything will clear. And once we get that done, we can glue this housing to it. So on the back side, you, hopefully you can see that little adjustment wheel inside of that hole. And you can see that we're going to have to enlarge that hole to clear that wheel. Also, there's a little bump, um, molding bumps on the back of this. One, two, three. And that one there is in the center, so that's going to be important later when we center this on here. That's the main thing we've got to worry about is getting this movement centered on this plate. But everything's got to be lined up, or otherwise uh, it won't work later on. So what I'm going to do now is I've got to put this thing in a vise and enlarge that hole. I'll use one of those uh, cone-shaped drills, multi size drill bits and just keep uh, enlarging it until it's big enough for this uh, adjustment wheel. Another thing to note, uh, this faceplate of this clock originally, it went all the way down inside of these tabs and they was actually poked through the bottom of them and little tabs bent over so you know you only had a space like that in there between the face plate and the bottom of this bracket that no longer can be because when we put this movement in there it's not going to go all the way down it'll only go that far but it doesn't matter because we're going to glue this movement or this face plate to the front of this movement anyway and so that'll that'll hold it it'll look like this when we get through you have your backing plate your quartz movement and your face plate they'll all be glued together and then the whole assembly will slip inside of that housing Well, I drilled that hole larger. Now when I put my module on here, my quartz movement, hopefully you can see that uh, the little wheel that sets the timing is available. You can also see that little plastic uh, tit there in the middle of that center hole. If you center that, everything is centered and there's one other thing I've got to do before I can glue this though this uh, has a inset here where you can put a UM5 battery that's what normally that's a one and a half volt battery problem is if we glue this down on here you would have to pry it off and re-glue it every time you want to change the battery so I'm going to need to run a couple of wire leads out here solder them to these two pins here on the end of where the battery makes contact to and bring them out and uh, I saw I use a double A battery which is much larger and therefore will last a lot longer like I say I have the one in my black mustang I think it's probably been in there for two years and it's still running so a double-a battery will run one of these things for a long time 
So, uh, let me get busy here soldering me some wires to this. That is always a problem. Um, these little battery terminals are like chrome plated metal and they're impossible to solder to. Normally what I do and what I tried to do here was I take my Dremel tool, put a little grinding bit in there and grind down to bare metal, grind the chrome off and um, solder to it. But it wouldn't work on this. I mean it just would not solder. So what I had to do was take some solid hookup wire, wrap it around those terminals and then load it down with solder and I it they seem to be pretty secure so I think that'll that'll hold so I've got it glued on there now I've glued the um, quartz mechanism down to the bracket I laid the little ends or the uh, faceplate on it to make sure it's centered and it is. Now this is what I used to glue it down. This is plain old black silicone gasket maker. Uh, adhesive sealant. Um, if I ever have to take this apart it'll be easy to pry loose and uh, I've done these before and it holds up, holds it just fine. So. I'll let that dry, and then I'll come back and glue the faceplate to the front of that mechanism. So this is set overnight, and um, seems to be pretty firmly glued to that back panel there. And um, so now I'm going to glue this dial facing to it using the same uh, drill gasket material, black silicon adhesive sealant. Okay, I've got that glued in and um, I use that little center pin to make sure the dial is centered. I've also got a pretty even space around the outside so I know that Face plate is in there in the center. I've sandblasted uh, these this housing for this rally pack, and so now I'm going to put some black wrinkle finish on it. Uh, normally to do this black wrinkle finish you would need to spray a real thick coat but you can do that if you've got good flat surfaces but you can do a flat surface and then turn it over and do the other flat surface and it won't run on you but this thing has got so many odd shapes I just don't see any way of putting a thick coat on without it running so I'm going to try a thin coat on the bottom of it uh, one of the things I learned about this wrinkle finish, when I first started doing them, well, I'll back up a little bit. I had a neighbor that taught me a great lesson uh, in the early days. He had a saying that if a little bit's good, a whole lot's better. And it normally works, but uh, it doesn't work on this wrinkle finish. I would spray it on real thick and get impatient with the way it was wrinkling up and I'd throw the heat to it and what happens then is it dries before it wrinkles and you get a mess. I found that uh, the right way to do this is to spray it on and then just slightly brush it with your heat gun. Just stay away from it and let it uh, wrinkle up slowly and that works pretty good. So. We're going to try it on this and see how it works. I'm going to spray a thin coat on it here, so I'm going to get the heat gun going and 
We'll just slightly brush it with heat. Okay, it's starting to wrinkle. You can see down in there how it's starting to wrinkle, so I'm going to turn the camera off and finish this section. Okay, that's looking real good. Actually, this thin coat really duplicates the original finish because the original finish was not a real deep wrinkle. It was almost a fuzz, and that's what I'm getting here, so... I'm really pleased with that so far. I'm going to try to do some more sections here. Here's another little something I do to make life easier. Um, these screws are supposed to go in the opposite direction. In other words, they go in this direction and they hold this on the inside but I put the screws in this turn them around backwards so that see if I can uh, do this where you can see it with one hand so that the screws will come out that direction and then I use these little neural nuts to hold them. These won't fit because these are 632 and these screws are 832. I gotta get me some 832 nuts, but that's the idea. That way when I need to change the battery, I don't have to take the uh, complete assembly off of the stern column. I can just undo these little neural nuts and the whole assembly will slip out and it's much easier to uh, get to. Okay, all finished and in the car. And um, you can see the clock there. Let me see if I can get another shot here of it. Um, looks real nice. And, and over here is the tachometer. And part two of this video is going to be on uh, how I refurbished this tachometer. But it looks real good. A little short video of the car. It's complete. I'm gonna. The only thing left to do to this car is I've got to take it next week and get an exhaust system put on it. You guys that know anything about Mustangs know that a six-cylinder Mustang can never be a GT, but I've got all the GT stuff on this car simply because I like it. I always thought candy apple red with black stripes looked good and so that's what I did. On the other side here is my black Mustang. I, uh, I won't uncover it completely but uh, it's a nice car as well. I uh, I bought this car new in 1965 and um, traded it in and went hunting for it in 1989, I believe, 86 maybe. Tracked it down, got it back, totally restored it. So um, that's a, a sentimental car. <laughs>